Okay, so we, let's see. let's draw a picture, <laughs> and some of you may be able to tell what I'm drawing. I'm not an artist, <clears throat> so I don't know. Perhaps you can tell that's supposed to be a, a spring scale, like a luggage scale or a fish scale, something like that. Perhaps you've used one of those, and um, you know inside there's a, a piece of metal, um, and it's a metal spring, and it um, it's wound up usually, and it stretches out. And the reason that, that that this works is because most metals have a very simple relationship between force and dis and displacement. I could draw the same concept as you have in the spring, and I could illustrate as many people do in in high school physics. They take a, a spring, and I've drawn in. A, just a, a block of material and, and it's loaded with a force and, and what you do is you measure the length of that uh, spring or that piece of material um, as as you stretch as you apply different loads to it and if you did if you did that you'd find that most materials have a straight line relationship that is it's linear there's a linear relationship between force and displacement if you measured the the slope we often use the letter k for that find that was the slope so it goes through the origin as the form of um, uh, the equation that you could fit to that is the equation for a straight line which is um, you know y equals mx plus b it's a common way that it's written of course it's just force in this case equals k the slope or the proportionality constant times x the the distance the length of the, of the material um, and that uh, that's um, actually a kind of a handy equation and it's uh, it's got a name um, it's commonly attributed to it it's called Hooke's law perhaps you've heard of that and it's just a straight line relationship between force and displacement the problem with that is if you were to say take a take two materials now or two two samples rather of the same material okay so I could take sample a okay of of uh, aluminum say it's 6061 t6 aluminum exactly the same um, <clears throat> alloy and then I, I I take another sample of exactly that same material okay and we we'll call this one B no but but as I said let's say they're the same material okay same material that's important same material and and I load both of those up with uh, force and I then take that and, and I plot now force versus distance for those two samples A and B I'd find that A had a higher slope and had a higher constant of proportionality or sometimes that, that K is called the, the spring constant and uh, A would have an apparently higher spring constant than B would, and in fact B would would fail; it would break at a at a lower value of force. And the reason that that's a, well, that's a bit confusing, is because it should be the same material. And so, really, as engineers, we'd like to have a material property that we could use that would would be independent of sample size. And so, the solution to that is actually just to divide by the cross-sectional area. So let me show you what we what we do. <clears throat> so here's another uh, sample again. We're going to pull axially, uniaxially, straight up and down. And, and there's the force. And this is the cross-sectional area. Uh, actually, you know what? I apologize. I'm going to actually just change this figure up just a little. So there we go, all that stuff's gone. So I'm going to draw in this area again without the force. Because what I want to do is I want to call that area, I want to call that the initial <clears throat> initial area. Cross-sectional area, actually. Oh man, I'm all over the place here today. Cross-sectional area. Okay, and then what happens when you apply a load to this, and this I'm going to draw with the yellow, is it elongates. And there's this new area, which we'll consider later. Okay, 
So this is, I'm exaggerating, uh, hopefully, obviously, the amount by which this is extending and, and getting narrower, but this is longer now and narrower, narrow, narrow, narrower, okay? But what we we're concerned with at this point is this initial cross-sectional area before we had a load on it. If we take that and use that, put that in the denominator below the force, we can define this thing called the stress. Okay, so this is the stress, and that's the Greek letter sigma. Okay to put the equations into little red boxes just so you can identify that they're in fact an uh, important equation and that is again a naught is the initial cross-sectional area now actually I'm not completely thorough here because this although we often just say stress technically this is in fact <clears throat> the engineering stress Okay, and that will become obvious a little, or, or important a little bit later when we want to, in fact, account for this reduction in cross-sectional area that you see there. That will be accounted for with something called the true stress. But for now, the engineering stress is actually very, very useful. It's very commonly used, and it's just the force over the initial cross-sectional area. Similarly, we can define the engineering uh, strain Greek letter epsilon as the change in length over the initial length. Okay, so this would be the initial length. And then there's this little elongation here at the bottom and this elongation at the top. Now because it's has you know translation equilibrium, it's not moving, you've got half of the elongation at the top and half of the elongation at the bottom. If I fixed it on the surface, it would all be on one side. But <clears throat> just to define what that change in length is, there you go. Now we put into our equation, and that defines our engineering strain, delta L over L naught. And so the nice thing about this is, at the end of that, if we plot now stress versus strain, we find that for both A and B, that is these two different size samples we had up here, <clears throat> the curve is the same. It's independent of sample size. So now that we see that the, the, the two curves are, are independent of, of sample size, and they're the same, uh, we can actually plot that uh, Hooke's Law again. Okay, so remember we had Hooke's Law involving force and displacement as F equals KX. Right. So now if we plot stress versus strain, and you'll notice, I apologize, I didn't actually introduce this properly, but down here on the on the, on the the x-axis, I, I plotted strain, where I, I would formerly have plotted force and displacement. So displacement here, um, displacement x is replaced with strain, right? Just as we said, force was, was not really sufficient because force depended on the size of the sample, and we normalized by cross-sectional area to get strain. Well, length isn't enough. This this length is insufficient. It depends on sample size. So what we do is we normalize by the length of the sample. So we take that change in length, the little bit extra length that we get if we're stretching it out, divide by the total length over which that elongation is occurring, and that gives us this quantity which we call strain, or the engineering strain specifically. So now I've plotted engineering stress versus engineering strain, and we see that the... Um, at least the initial portion of the stress strain curve for most materials is, is straight and regardless of the size of the sample the, the curve is the same and in fact the slope here where we saw previously the slope of f equals k, the, the straight line f equals k, um, kx had a slope of k now the slope of the, the stress versus strain uh, curve here, the linear portion, is the modulus. And so we can rewrite Hooke's law as stress equals the this constant of proportionality, which is actually um, actually called the uh, sorry, correction this one. New terminology. I like to use yellow 
for. So that's the Young's modulus. Okay, that's the proportion, the constant of proportionality um, between stress and strain. And we can write um, Hooke's law as stress equals Young's modulus times strain. And I like to also put, as you know, equations in a little red box. So that's uh, that's an important one. And that is, as I said, that is Hooke's law.